Hello, we're glad you could join us today uh, for our time of Bible study. This is uh, session four in uh, Gospel Project materials under Jesus the Healer. And this is the fourth uh, lesson that we have had uh, of Jesus uh, healing people with various kinds of uh, diseases and uh, physical problems in their body. And today we're going to be looking at Jesus healing a man who was uh, born blind out of John the ninth chapter. So let's pause and have a word of prayer as we begin. Father, I pray that you would open our hearts and minds as we open your word and let it speak to our hearts. Lord, help us that we would not be uh, spiritually blind, uh, but Lord, that you can show us the, the power of your presence in our lives, the power that the Holy Spirit supplies to us to enlighten us and to show us uh, what you have for us to do in this world. Thank you for this time today. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, the, the lesson today uh, is focusing in primarily on the need for um, spiritual enlightenment or coming out of spiritual blindness, spiritual darkness into the light that Jesus has come to, to bring. He says in uh, chapter 8 of John's Gospel and verse 12, he says, I am the light of the world. He's going to make that same statement again here in John chapter 9 and uh, verse 5. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. So uh, this, is, this is really exciting that uh, this blind man from birth is going to have his sight opened to him physically for the first time. And uh, he is also going to have uh, a spiritual light turned on in his life as well as physical life. This also is a passage that challenges us as Christians uh, about the job that God has given us to do. Uh, Jesus said that we must do the works of him who sent me, speaking to his disciples here, we must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. In other words, he is reminding us there of two things. Number one, that his time on earth uh, is not going to be all that long. His ministry was only three years long. He was about halfway through that ministry at this point. And uh, then he would go to the cross. He would go to the grave. He would be resurrected. He would ascend to the Father. And uh, so the, the, the time is marked. And uh, his, his time is not endless as far as his physical time here on earth. And for that matter, neither is our time endless here upon this earth. So Jesus says he has a job to do that the Father sent him here uh, to do, and that is to shine the light uh, of uh, who he is uh, upon this world. And we have a job to do. We, through what Jesus has done in us as believers, he's turned on the light in us. He's turned on the Holy Spirit in us when we become believers. And we are to reflect the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not our own light, but his light um, is going to be reflected by us as believers. And that light is to shine into a dark world, shine into a world where uh, people have never heard, perhaps, of Jesus. They, they don't know that they can have forgiveness of their sins. They don't know that they can trust him as Savior and, uh, and have a promise of eternal life with him. And so uh, he has commissioned us, will commission us again and again uh, in the scriptures and tell us that this is, this is my job. I came here. Father sent me here to do a job. Uh, I'm doing it. And, and I'm going to send you out into the world to do a job, the same job that I've been doing, that is sharing the good news of Christ with those uh, who are lost. Some years ago, I was serving as director of missions in Knoxville. Uh, we had uh, two uh, centers that we operated there in Knoxville, one on the south side of town, another on the north side of town, where we did... Uh, 
uh, ministry to the people who lived in those communities. They were, both communities were somewhat uh, poorer and uh, housing project areas. And uh, uh, we, we came to a point on, in the one on the south side, Montgomery Village Baptist Center, where we needed a new director. And so I began to pray about this and seek who could we have to lead that ministry there. And I, I knew I wanted someone who had a real passion for uh, lost people and a passion to see ministry done, not just to give away food and clothing and all those kind of things, which, which we did, but uh, a person who had a passion for uh, people who did not know Jesus. And uh, God began to put a, a lady's name on my heart, Carol Webb. And um, I, I knew Carol enough to know that, that she had this passion. So I sat down and talked with her. And I said, Carol, you know, you're the, the main thing that I want you to do here is to share Jesus with lost people. Oh, my goodness. I, I could not have been uh, led to a better choice than, than Carol. She had such a passion. Uh, if somebody new came into the center uh, there and Carol had not met these people before, didn't know them, then she would immediately uh, engage them in a conversation and began to, to talk to them about their life. And, and uh, if they were not a Christian already, she'd find that out real quick. And, and she'd take them into her office and she'd sit down with them right there and, and share Christ with them. And most of the time, if they were lost, she'd lead them to the Lord. In fact, uh, she was leading uh, 35 to 40 people a year to the Lord uh, just in, in, in personal uh, uh, evangelism and sharing Christ with them. And uh, oh, what a joy and what a blessing. So that's a part of what uh, this passage is about. And Jesus is saying, uh, the night is coming when when we won't be able to share this uh, this word that God's put me here to do as his son and, and God's put you here to do as well to reflect the light that is in me. He said, we need to turn on the lights for people just as much as we possibly can. So uh, let's, let's walk through this passage. He was passing by his old man blind from birth in John chapter 9 verse 1. And his disciples asked him a question, said, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? In other words, it was a given to them. Uh, here's a blind man. He was born blind. He'd never been able to see. Uh, the only reason that they could think of, the only reason that they knew was there had to be sin involved in this somewhere. Somebody did something bad, wrong, for this man to be born blind. Either him or his parents. Well, now, if he's born blind... Uh, how could he have sinned in the womb? Well, they, they, that doesn't make any sense at all. And so uh, they thought, well, maybe his parents uh, sinned. And that's the reason Jesus said, no, neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered. This came about that God's work might be displayed in him, and we must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. In other words, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to share with this man uh, how he can have his sight. He hadn't told him that yet. He said, we have to do the works of those. We have to turn on the light in people's lives so that they can know what real daylight is all about. This man didn't know what daylight was. He never had any sight at all. And he says to his disciples, he said, hey, listen, guys, night is coming when no one can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. In other words, I've come to turn on the light for people that they can know me, they can see me, they can know who I am, and they can have the light of God in their heart. After he had said these things, he spit on the ground, he made some mud from the saliva, and spread the mud on his eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, and the word Siloam there, and John includes this in the scripture, he said it means sent, S-E-N-T. So he left, washed, and came back seeing. His neighbors and those who formerly had seen him as a beggar, and that's what this man did. That was his occupation, I guess you could say. For a blind man, there just wasn't much to do except to beg uh, for a living. Uh, and uh, he was there in the temple area, uh, and this was a Sabbath day, and he knew people might be more sympathetic to him. And uh, his neighbors and those who formerly had seen him as a beggar 
said, isn't this the man who sat begging? He can see now. He, he did what Jesus told him to do. He, uh, Jesus made the mud, uh, used saliva and a little bit of dirt, made up a little mud, put it on his eyes, and sent him down to the pool at Siloam and uh, wash. And uh, immediately when he did that, the man was able to see. He comes back, and his neighbors who have known him probably all of his life, uh, they, they had seen him as the beggar who was always there in the temple area, and they said, isn't this the man who sat begging? And some said, uh, he's the one. And others said, no, uh, but he looks like him. But the man himself who, who had had this miracle performed, uh, he, he kept saying, I'm the one, I'm the one. Therefore, uh, they asked him, then how were your eyes open? Uh, you were blind, but how is it that you can now see? And verse 11, he said, The man called Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes, and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So when I went and washed, I received my sight. And they were just flabbergasted. They just couldn't couldn't believe. And so they looked around. And they said, Well, where is he? Where Where is this man Jesus? And he said, I, I don't know. I don't know. They brought the man who used to be blind to the Pharisees. The day that Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes was a Sabbath day. Now, this is what's going to get Jesus in trouble again because he's already performed. He, he performed a miracle just uh, very recently uh, on the Sabbath day where the, the lame man was by the pool and... Uh, uh, he couldn't get in the water because uh, he was lame. His legs didn't work. He couldn't get into the pool in time to be healed. And uh, that was a Sabbath day. Now here he is again. He's restored him. He's given a man sight. And he did this healing miracle on the Sabbath. So again, the Pharisees asked him how he received his sight. They're questioning this, this man now that has been given his sight. And the man says, he put mud on my eyes. He told them, I washed and I can see. Therefore, some of the Pharisees said, uh, this man's not from God, not the blind man now, Jesus. Uh, Jesus is not from God, for he doesn't keep the Sabbath. Why, well, you know, stirring up this mud, that was work. Uh, doing the things that he did, that was work. How can a sinful man perform such signs, they said, and there was a division among them. Again, they asked the blind man, what do you say about him since he opened your eyes? And the blind man said, he's a prophet. The Jews did not believe this about him, that he was blind and received sight, until they summoned the parents of the one who had received his sight. In other words, the, the, the man gave his testimony. He said, this is what happened. Uh, the, this man came there, and, and uh, he made up the mud and put it on my eyes, sent me to Siloam pool to, to wash, and I, and I could see. I've got my sight. And uh, they, they just couldn't believe, so they, they kept after him. Uh, he's a prophet. The Jews did not believe this about him, that he was blind and received sight, until they summoned the parents of the one who had received his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, the one you say was born blind? How then does he now see? We know this is our son, and that he was born blind, his parents answered. But we don't know how he now sees, and we don't know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He's of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they were afraid of the Jews, since the Jews had already agreed that if anyone confessed Jesus as Messiah, he would be banned from the synagogue. Now, folks, that was a pretty serious thing to be banned from the synagogue uh, because that meant that uh, not only could they not come, but it meant that they were going to be shunned, that... You know, people who had been their friends for a long, long time. Uh, the this, uh, parents of this blind man had been coming to the synagogue all their lives, ever since they were uh, probably 12 years of age. They'd lived there in Jerusalem all these years. And uh, they, they they were there every Sabbath day. And uh, to, to be shunned and to be socially distant, we're social distancing today because of the virus, but to be socially distant uh, because they had been shunned or they had been kicked out of the synagogue uh, by the Pharisees, that was a serious thing, and they certainly didn't want this to happen. And uh, so uh, uh, that's why they were they, they're putting this back on their son at this point. They said, well, 
Uh, he's of age, ask him what happened. So a second time they summoned the man who had been blind and told him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. Now, when they uh, made that statement, give glory to God, that comes out of Joshua chapter, chapter 7, verse 19, where basically it, it says uh, it's the same thing as going to court and uh, laying your hand on the Bible and saying, you swear, you swear on the Bible that uh, this is what happened. Well, uh, that, that what they're saying here is uh, give glory to God. Swear in the name of God this is what happened. And, and they're trying to do something else, too. They're trying to put a wedge of division between God and Jesus. Uh, they want this man to give all glory to God and none to Jesus. Why, there's nobody that they'd ever seen that could do anything like this before. And uh, so they're trying to make Jesus a sinner because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. He did this thing on the Sabbath day. And uh, so... The second time they summoned the man who had been blind and told him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether or not he's a sinner, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind and now I can see. Wow. There's a, there's a message, there's a gospel message in that verse 25 right there. I was blind but now I can see. There are a lot of people... Uh, people who have trusted Christ as their Savior, every one of us can say that. Uh, before Jesus came into my life, before I trusted Christ as my Savior, I was blind. Uh, but now I can see because he's opened my mind, he's opened my heart. Then they ask him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I already told you, the man said, and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You don't want to become his disciples too, do you? <laughs> so... The, the man who had been blind and now been healed, he's, uh, he's getting a little straightforward with the Pharisees. And uh, they say, well, wow, that's ridiculous. That's rid No, we don't want to become the disciples. You're that man's disciple, but we're Moses' disciples. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but this man, we don't know where he's from. Well, they did too. They knew that he was from uh, Nazareth. They knew that he had grown up there. They knew some things about him. They'd been doing their research on, on Jesus already, but uh, they were absolutely denying that he had anything to do with God. They were making him a sinner. They said, man, we know Moses. We've got his writings. We know what Moses said, but we don't know who this guy who's come into town lately and, uh, and, and is doing these works on the Sabbath day, a sinner doing stuff on... This is an amazing thing, the man told them. You don't know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. Now, here it comes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does his will, he listens to him. Now, the blind man knew some things about the Bible. He might not have been able to see. He might not have been able to read the Scripture. But he'd been to the synagogue and he'd heard the Bible and his parents obviously had taught him uh, the scriptures. And uh, so this, uh, this passage that he is quoting there to them is from Proverbs 15, 29, which uh, teaches that uh, God does not hear the prayer of, of a sinner, a person who intentionally sins, who uh, acknowledges that they don't have anything to do with God and yet, all of a sudden, they want, they decide they got a problem. They want to pray to him anyway and just see if God can help. Uh, he says, I know the Bible says, or the Old Testament, the Proverbs says, God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. He wouldn't be able to do anything. That is, if Jesus were a sinner, if this man who healed my eyes were a sinner, he couldn't have done any of this. And then that just made the Pharisees that much more mad. They said, you were born entirely in sin. They're accusing the man now who has been blind and who now can see. They're just, they're really laying it on him. They say, you are entirely born in sin. And are you trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. Well, again, that's the picture of being thrown out of the synagogue. And that was a serious thing. Whether it was a temporary dismissal from the synagogue, we don't know. If it had been a permanent one, then he, he couldn't have set foot in the synagogue anymore. That would have been very serious. 
When Jesus heard that they had thrown the man out, he found him and asked, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Now, that passage right there, that verse, Son of Man, is interpreted two different ways in, in some scriptures uh, say Son of God. Do you believe in the Son of God? Jesus referred to himself as Son of Man. Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? He asked. Jesus answered, You have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. In other words, you've heard of the Son of God? In fact, I am the Son of God. That's what he is saying to this man. And uh, and the man said, this is the man who had been blind, who washed his eyes uh, with the mud on them. And he said, I believe, Lord. And he worshiped him. Jesus said, verse 39, I came into this world for judgment in order that those who do not see will see, and those who see will become blind. In other words, he came for those whose hearts were opened and willing to see that they might see fully that he is the Christ. And for those who say, we see, like the Pharisees, they're saying, why, we see, we understand all these things. We know who God is. We know who Moses is. We got it all figured out. We got everything in place just like we wanted. And Jesus said, those are the ones who are blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these things, and they asked Jesus, we aren't blind too, are we? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you wouldn't have sin. But now that you say, we see, your sin remains. In other words, they said, oh, we know what sin is. We know what sin's all about. And Jesus is saying to them, because you claim that you know what sin is, and yet you won't trust me, you won't believe that I am the Son of God and that I came to save this world, then you're the ones who are blind. Oh my goodness, what a powerful, powerful lesson this is today. There's a hymn that says, My Faith Has Found a Resting Place. It was written in the late 1800s by a man named Liddy Edmonds. I want to just share the words of that great hymn, and uh, you probably sung this, uh, in church before it says my faith has found a resting place not in device or creed I trust the ever living one his wounds for me shall plead enough for me that Jesus saves this ends my fear and doubt a sinful soul I come to him he'll never cast me out my heart is leaning on the word the written word of God salvation by my Savior's name salvation through his blood my great physician heals the sick, the lost he came to save. For me, his precious blood he shed. For me, his life he gave. I need no other argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Can you say that today? Can you say in your heart of hearts, it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Let's pray. Father, thank you that your word is so true. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son, the light of the world, into this world to turn on the, the light in the darkness so that we might see and we might have forgiveness of our sins through trusting in him as Savior. Father, thank you again for our time today in your word. In Jesus' name, amen.